These procedures include timing the pump, testing the injector nozzle, bleeding air from the fuel system, and adjusting the pump's idle speed and governor. We will also perform a compression check and a glow plug system check that will help you quickly pinpoint a problem. The VE injection pump is used in both the Toyota 2J and 1E engines. To demonstrate the procedures for timing and adjusting this pump, we'll use a 1Z diesel engine. The VE injection pump has only one plunger that rotates to distribute fuel to each cylinder. This design ensures an even injection rate of fuel to the cylinder, providing optimal engine torque. To time a VE injection pump, you'll need a standard set of hand tools, a plunger stroke measuring tool with a dial indicator, and its adapter. Before you begin, check to see if the mark on the timing case aligns with the mark on the pump body. If the marks don't line up, this could be the problem. You may need to adjust the pump body so that its timing is correct. To begin, we will need to get the cylinder to stop near top dead center. Remove the number one cylinder injector nozzle. To do this, simply loosen the nuts and pull it out. We will remove the valve cover so we can verify the position of the cylinder. Now turn the engine over with a starter. This will bring the number one cylinder near top dead center. You can check this by making sure the intake and the exhaust valves of cylinder number one are up and closed. Now remove the screen on the torque converter and use a screwdriver to turn the crankshaft forward to set the number one cylinder at top dead center. With the other hand, check to see when the valve action of cylinder number one is loose. Then check the pulley marks to see if they line up. The pulley V-groove on the left side as you face the front of the engine should be aligned with a pointer on the timing gear cover. Now, remove the cap screw at the rear of the injector pump. Inspect the area around the plug to make sure it is clean. If it's dirty, take a rag and wipe it off. Dirt in this area could get into the fuel system and cause serious pump problems. Discard the crush washer. It must be replaced each time it is removed. Now, install the adapter and the plunger stroke measuring tool with dial indicator into the threaded hole where the cap screw was removed. Using the screwdriver, again turn the crankshaft, but this time in the reverse direction from top dead center to 25 degrees or more. Now, set the dial indicator to zero. When it has been set, Slowly turn the crankshaft in the forward direction until it again reaches top dead center. Now read the dial indicator. It should register from 1.54 to 1.6 millimeters of plunger cam lift. Our dial indicator registers 1.58, so the plunger cam lift meets specifications. If the measurement doesn't meet specifications, then the pump must be retimed. To do this, we must loosen the pump body so it can pivot for adjustment. Before we loosen the pump, we'll remove the plunger stroke measuring tool and its adapter from the rear of the injector pump. This way we can avoid scratching them with the tools we use to loosen the pump. Now we can loosen the pump by untightening all the fuel lines, the bracket beneath the pump, and by loosening the mounting screw. After loosening the pump, reinstall the plunger stroke measuring tool. When it is installed, adjust the timing by tilting the pump away from the engine to increase cam lift or toward the engine to decrease cam lift. Watch the gauge for the correct reading. As you are adjusting the pump, be careful not to move it too much. Only a few thousandths of an inch can make a significant difference in engine performance. When the gauge reading is correct, tighten two mounting nuts, and then check the timing several times to ensure the pump is properly timed. When you are sure that the pump timing is correct, secure the pump in place by tightening all the mounting nuts. Remove the special service tool. Insert a new copper crush washer on the cap screw, and then replace it at the rear of the pump. Now tighten the bracket and the fuel line. After all the mounting hardware and fuel lines are tightened, it is time to air bleed the fuel system. 
The fuel system must be air-free to run properly. Otherwise, your engine might have problems starting because an insufficient amount of fuel is reaching the combustion chamber. To air bleed the 1Z diesel engine, first loosen the knurled knob on the bottom of the fuel filter by turning it counterclockwise. Now operate the plunger on top of the filter, pump it up and down until all the air is removed from the hoses and the plunger becomes hard to press. When you're finished, re-tighten the knob on the bottom. This procedure bleeds the line between the fuel tank and the injection pump. To air bleed the fuel lines, you'll need to start the engine and let it idle for a few minutes. Now loosen a fuel line from an injector. This expels any air on the high pressure side of the system. When it comes out in a smooth, steady stream, re-tighten it and loosen the next injector. If there's still evidence of air in the low pressure side, bleed the system again until the air is completely removed and the engine idles smoothly. If the engine continues to run erratically, you may need to perform additional troubleshooting checks. Carboned or clogged fuel injectors can cause a loss of power. If a nozzle is burnt, it will cause the engine to run erratically. There are three basic tests for checking the injector nozzle. The pressure test, the leak test, and the spray pattern test. To perform these tests, you'll need a nozzle rater and some test fluid. To ensure valid results, use only the prescribed oil for testing nozzles. Remove each of the nozzles and then clean them thoroughly with solvent. Before you begin testing nozzles on the nozzle rater, put on some goggles so your eyes will be protected from the injector spray. To perform the pressure test, connect the injector nozzle lightly to the tester stand pipe. Then lightly pump the handle a few times to bleed air from the pump. Now tighten the nut with light torque. Be careful not to over tighten it. You could distort the nozzle body and affect the spray pattern. Open the gauge valve about one-eighth of the turn and then slowly pump the handle to force fuel into the injector. When the spray starts, read the gauge and then compare the gauge readings with the specifications listed in the repair manual. The pressure test is a good method for determining if the nozzles are leaking and if they are injecting the correct spray pattern at the proper pressure. If the pressure had been below the standard, it would have been necessary to adjust the nozzle to correct opening pressure. This would have required you to take the injector apart, select the proper shim or shims, and insert them at the top end of the spring. To decide which shim to use, refer to a chart like this one to choose the correct part number and size of shim. Now, simply insert the selected shim at the top end of the spring and put the injector back together. When it is assembled, test the nozzle again to make sure it meets specifications. In addition to testing the nozzle pressure, it is also important to check the nozzles for leaks. A leaky nozzle can cause fuel knock or excessive black exhaust. Before you perform this test, dry the nozzle tip with air or a lint-free cloth. Now, with the gauge valve open, slowly pump the handle to build pressure in the injector. Lock the tester handle down for 10 seconds with a pressure at 256 PSI. Now check to see if there is any leakage. If there is leakage, Check the fittings and the overflow hole. Make sure the tester valve is closed and then try to clear the tip by quickly pumping the handle. Now test it again. If it is still leaking, replace the nozzle with a new one. Another way to determine if a nozzle is working correctly is to test its spray pattern. You should perform a spray pattern test if your truck has fuel knock or if there is excessive black smoke coming from the exhaust. Problems like coking and contaminated fuel might also be symptoms of a faulty spray pattern. To test the spray pattern, pump the tester handle with a smooth, fast action. Carefully observe the spray pattern. Never place your hand in the spray pattern. The spray pressure is very high, reaching pressures in excess of 5,000 PSI and can cause serious injury. Now compare your injector spray pattern with this chart. It should look similar to the pattern on the left. If the nozzle spray pattern is faulty, disassemble the nozzle and inspect it for defects. Clean the nozzle and try it again. If the spray pattern is still defective, you should replace the nozzle with a new one. If too much or too little fuel is reaching the combustion chambers, or if there is excessive black exhaust, the governor could be discharging an incorrect volume of fuel. It might be necessary to adjust the idle or the governor speed. If there is fuel knock, this could mean that the injector pump 
is over-injecting fuel into the chamber. Or if the engine's idle is rough and uneven, this could be caused by an improperly adjusted idle capsule spring. To adjust the idle speed, first warm the engine to operating temperature. Install a diesel tachometer to fuel line number one, such as the Nipendenso diesel tachometer. Loosen the nut on the idle adjusting screw, and then turn the screw while you watch the tachometer. Adjust the idle speed to 650 plus or minus 50 RPM. If your governor is out of adjustment, it is important to adjust it to the no-load maximum RPM. This assures the proper amount of fuel is reaching the chambers and prevents the pump from over-injecting. To begin, cut the seal on the screw and then start the engine. Fully depress the accelerator pedal and insert a block to keep it depressed. This way you can keep the engine running at high RPMs so you can adjust the governor to the proper maximum RPM. Now set the no-load maximum RPM by turning the maximum speed adjusting screw. For one ton to one and three quarter ton vehicles, you should adjust the no-load maximum RPM to 2300 plus or minus 50 RPM. And for vehicles from two to three tons, adjust the no-load maximum RPM to 2600 plus 50 or minus 100 RPM. This vehicle is two and a half tons, so we will adjust its no-load maximum RPM to 2600. After the governor is adjusted, it is good to perform an engine stall test to assure that the engine is functioning properly. With the engine running at the governed no-load speed, pull the tilt lever back to place the mast in the tilt relief position. Now check the tachometer reading. It should indicate that the engine is running at 100 RPM less than the governed no-load speed. If it checks out, shut off the engine and then reseal the maximum speed adjusting screw with safety wire. This will keep the screw intact and discourage tampering. If the tachometer drops more than 100 RPM less than the govern no load speed, you should check the condition of the engine. One way is to perform a compression test. You'll need a standard set of hand tools as well as a pressure gauge capable of reading up to 500 PSI. To begin, start the engine and warm it up to operating temperature. Once the engine is warm, shut it off so you can remove the glow plug connector strap and the glow plug. Loosen the glow plug connector strap by removing the screws located on it. Now insulate the hot wire on the connector strap with electrical tape. Loosen the glow plugs using a wrench and then remove them by hand. After you have removed the plugs, disconnect the fuel cut solenoid connector. Now, insert the diesel compression gauge adapter into a glow plug mounting hole and install the gauge. Make sure the connection is tight. Next, use a hydrometer to make sure the battery is sufficiently charged. It must turn the engine at 260 RPM for the duration of the test. With the throttle propped open, crank the engine and take a compression reading of the first cylinder you are testing. Count the number of compression strokes it takes to reach the highest pressure rating. That is, until the compression gauge stops rising. In this test, it took five strokes to give us the highest pressure rating, 440 PSI. The number of strokes is important because you must test the other cylinders at this same number. Now check the repair manual for the specifications listed for the engine type you are working with. For the 2J engine, the standard compression is 385 PSI, the minimum allowable pressure is 285, and the pressure differences between the cylinders should be no greater than 28 PSI. Our pressure rating of 440 PSI for cylinder number one meets the standard requirement. Let's check the next cylinder. When you have installed the gauge into the next glow plug hole, crank the engine again. After five strokes, this cylinder reads 430 PSI. This is well above the minimum of 285 PSI. The difference between the cylinders is only 10 PSI. This is less than the required 28 PSI limit, so it meets the standard requirement. Now conduct this same compression check for the rest of the cylinder. If the pressure register is low, you may need to do a wet check or a wet compression test. To perform this test, reconnect the fuel cut solenoid plug so fuel will be injected into the cylinder to help seal the ring. 
Now compression check the cylinders again. If there is an increase in pressure while conducting the wet check, this indicates that the added fuel helps seal the rings and increase the pressure. If the pressure does not increase, this would indicate leaky valves. In this way, the wet check helps determine if you have leaky piston rings or valves. For this series of tests, you will need a standard set of hand tools and a volt meter. First of all, let's check the glow plug timer to make sure that the amount of time to heat the glow plug matches the specifications listed on this glow plug timing chart. The correct time span for an engine at 68 degrees is 8 seconds. Turn the ignition switch on and measure the time the glow indicator lamp is on. It took 8 seconds, which meets the specifications, so it checks out. This timing function is controlled by a heat sensor called a thermistor, which adjusts the time according to the temperature of the engine. Another way to ensure the preheat time is correct is to use a voltometer to check the relay. To do this, put the probes on terminals 2 and 5. Now turn the engine switch to the run position. This applies battery voltage to terminals 2 and 5 of the preheat timer plug. Now check the reading with a voltometer. After a short time, the voltage should drop to zero on terminal 2. If the voltage does not drop to zero after a few seconds, the timer should be replaced. Now let's test the glow plug. Using a voltometer, you can test for the continuity between the threaded portion of the connector and the body just above the heater section. With the voltometer on the R times 1 scale, the resistance should be 0.02 ohms. An infinity reading would indicate the glow plug is damaged internally. If the continuity test indicates a high resistance, replace the glow plug with a new one. It is also important to test the thermistor for resistance, making sure it changes with the temperature of the engine. The thermistor is a heat sensor that adjusts the time according to the temperature of the engine, setting it to the proper time needed to heat the glow plug. This way the glow plugs last longer because they aren't used so much. When the engine is cold, the timer could stay on up to 18 seconds. If the engine is hot, the thermistor would decrease this time. To begin, place the thermistor in a container of water and heat it while measuring the temperature with a thermometer. Test the thermistor for resistance across the terminals on the component. The thermistor's resistance should change as the temperature of the water changes. Check this chart to see if the temperature and resistance match with specifications. Fabricating a Toyota diesel engine, use only 10W30 weight API SECC motor oil. Never use 10W40 weight oil. By using the proper oil and fuel, your Toyota diesel engine should give you years of trouble-free operation. Let's briefly review what we've covered. We learned the procedures for timing and adjusting the VE injection pump. A properly timed and adjusted pump will keep a diesel engine running smoothly. Air bleeding the fuel system is also essential for top engine performance. Air in the fuel system can cause starting problems and cause the engine to run erratically. We also discussed a series of tests for injector nozzles. Remember, a clogged or defective nozzle can cause a loss of power, excessive smoking, fuel knock, uneven idle speed, and starting problems. We also covered some important troubleshooting procedures like the compression check and the glow plug system check. These tests can help you pinpoint a problem with a Toyota diesel engine. If you can locate the immediate cause, you can avoid unnecessary procedures and save valuable repair time.